So we will continue with single point mooring systems which are the most widely used. Now there are various uh, forms. So these are called single point moorings or single point mooring wires <coughs> to be more precise. So here the uh, prime consideration is you uh, as I told you last class number one is uh, uh, environmental loads. Now environmental loads you calculate the um, uh, structural response. So this you have to calculate from the structures. So structural response to environmental loads. And the most important after this is the, the after that structure is your motion response. So all these buoy configurations have basically evolved how to reduce flat, uh, the buoy motions. So buoy uh, motion response of buoys. So these are two primary considerations. Number three you can write is. Uh, maintenance maintenance and servicing now the uh, servicing is actually very crucial because you are dealing with oil so there are uh, last class i have given you on a, a diagram of an alc where you see number of joints. Now these joints have to be properly maintained, otherwise your boyer is going to snap because boyers come under this category that I have told you. Boyers are basically compliant structures, that is it moves with the waves. So there are three types of offshore structures that at the beginning I told you, one is a fixed category. The other is the fully floating and between these two you have compliant structures. Now compliant structures the essence is that they do not yield completely with the waves but they go, uh, they yield very to a large extent than your uh, fixed structures. So anyway, so that is why the compliant structures have come. So maintenance and servicing is another important area of consideration for buoy design. So motion buoy design. And what else? Four is the water depth criteria. You will see how the, the uh, evolution of these wires have come with water depth. Now, if, uh, if the water depth is not very large, you can go for a. This is called a single anchor leg mooring or a salam system. This is called single anchor leg mooring. So uh, in the offshore actually buoys are of different categories. The ones that you have seen in the rivers, those are very simple buoys. So here basically you have a large tank at the water surface and almost in all boils you will find the buoyancy is supplied by this tank. Your buoyancy tank is located at the water surface. So this is a single anchor leg mooring buoy and then you have one joint just below the tank. Uh, you can, uh, I think this is a universal joint probably, it is not mentioned and then this is a steel arm or a steel leg which is going to the seabed and then you have another joint out here. So this is a salam system, that is your seabed. So this joint, this you write universal joints.
this one universal joint and another universal joint is at the C bed. Uh, and this uh, the base is actually now piled, you have to uh, do uh, is better to pile the base to the C bed because these structures are light and normally a heavy sort of base is not very congenial. Now here at what you have this is called a turntable. Now on the turntable you locate your loading hose. So your tanker may be out here. So this is your FSU or floating storage unit as sometimes it is called. So this is a FSU. Now your tanker actually takes the loading hose from this point. So this is your loading hose. So this is one design. So this is a pretty small wire and this is your buoyancy tank. So the behavior of this buoy is a inverted pendulum, it can swing in <coughs> any direction about this joint. Now as far as uh, design is concerned, there are some aspects which you should remember. First is the these two joint designs. I think in machine design you have done the ball and quarter joint and all these joint designs. So the universal joint, the other joint that is called a cardon joint. Cardon joint actually will not give the rotations in all the directions and the other is a universal joint. So in mechanical engineering those of you who have done machine design just look up any book on machine design they will tell you about these two joints. Now the problem out here is the maintaining of these two joints and you have a riser which is coming from the seabed and it is taken up uh, on the side of your this leg. So it is clipped out here. So riser also has a lot of motions that means you have to design riser in such that this uh, sway motions or probably the angular motions are taken care of and then it comes to this tank and goes up and you can load your hose. Now what happens in unfavorable weather this tanker will come and bang against the boya. you see so you can see this part is very vulnerable. Although the fendering is there, but there is a likely chance of this is called ship overriding wire. Although the ship is anchored, your tanker is anchored, but this you cannot in storm conditions this may happen. The ship is going to come and crash against the boya. Now in that event, this joint is going to be damaged. First of all, you can see this is joint, this joint is located below the water surface. So a person has to go down below the water surface in order to maintain this joint. Joints have to be inspected, especially the underwater part, the divers or ROV, they go down and inspect these joints. But problem out here is, the one problem you will face is the tanker coming in crashing against the boya and damaging this joint. And the other problem is the maintenance part. But if you can take care of this, you have this kind of confidence. Now one thing you can see that there is no mooring wires attached to the buoyancy tank or the boya itself. Hmm. Uh, so the, you will have a lot of motions about this joint. Hmm. There is no restraint actually. So, but these are actually uh, small wires, so we are not much bothered about it. The only thing that you, you can bother is the ship overriding the boy. So in offshore actually, the other prime consideration is cost. So there is a, always a trade-off between cost, 
there is always trade off between these two aspects between you have to strike a balance between safety safety is a very prime consideration in the oil exploration oil exploration and lifting from safety and cost now you have to balance between these two so which one you will prefer that is once your marine riser so this is your marine riser okay now marine riser being snapped or damaged is a very serious issue as you can see in the disaster in gulf of mexico so if you can take care of that you go ahead with this because this cost is less uh, the other option is you can enlarge the size of the boiler so this is a single anchor leg mode so this is called a alc alc is another name for articulated loading column this i think i have given you the diagram last class now in this uh, configuration you can see that the marine riser you can take um, inside but this is slightly larger boiler uh, you can have a heavy deck cranes and all that on top of the deck so this is your um, boiler uh, alc has a tank which is more or less going down to the seabed this is called the articulated loaded loaded column or loading column you can say but again there is a universal joint at the bottom so this is another configuration but this is bigger than the salam concept now here you you have your loading hose turn table and you may have <coughs> the helicopter deck out here so this is a slightly a larger boiler okay so your loading hose will so this is your water line and your fsu will be located somewhere here so this thing is again turn table will be here this is your loading hose so this is your universal joint buoyancy tank now one advantage you will get from this configuration is that you are giving some at least some protection to your pipeline or riser so riser you can take it inside riser is the support is through the buoyancy tank and you can take it on the deck so this is your heavy deck so this is a bigger boiler so you can see the configurations of boilers so the buoyancy tank actually gives you the upward buoyancy that is the writing moment so here is the weight is acting down and the writing moment uh, the center of buoyancy you find out from your hydrostatics so in any position of the boiler you will always be getting a writing moment but still there will be a lot of sway motions isn't it it will behave like an inverted pendulum so the chance of tanker crashing against the boiler is still there but with uh, more protection to the marine riser so your marine riser is going inside this now this type of boiler actually the salam and the alc you cannot install in very deep water all these you say these are more or less these are all these are compliant structures with connection to the seabed as you can see uh, this is also a compliant structure category inverted pendulum so the hydrostatics is simple this there will be a writing moment that's all and taking care of the weight and your uh, this uh, healing moment will come from the waves 
So this, this multiplied by this arm, that is your overturning moment, isn't it? So this is your H. So this is your wave load. Say F H is your healing moment. And how you get the writing moment? The writing moment will come from the buoyancy support. Buoyancy that you calculate the center of buoyancy that you will get from here. So, this you will get the writing arm. So, this is your buoyancy lever and this is the overturning moment. So, this is your ALC. Now, so similar thing is that now going beyond this, uh, now all these things you have to design keeping into mind the um, production rate. So, if you have uh, it has not, it is not mentioned whether this has storage capacity or not, but then you will come back to the later one. This is the other one is called a fixed tower. So, in the fixed tower concept, that means there is no motions you can get rid of all the motions. But you make the base very heavy. So, your loading hose will come here. So, fixed tower is more protection, no motions. More protection to riser, no motions, virtually no motions. Now, the other varieties is the uh, uh, so this catenary thing I have told you, no? Uh, we started with some. Now, the most common is your this calm C A L M. These, these are the boyers that you normally see in the harbors. When you go to Calcutta port or Bombay port, you will see the ships are moored, but those are mooring boys, those are not offshore terminals. So, this is a calm concept. Calm concept is catenary anchor leg. This is called catenary anchor leg mooring. So, these are very common. So, this, uh, this is your say sea surface, but the problem is they do not have any <coughs> attachment with the seabed or fixation with the seabed by means of a fixed uh, uh, this thing column or whatever joint whatever it is. It is a absolutely floating type of wire. So, calm is a floating buoy. So, here you have anchor chains. Now, these buoys you can see in any port. Now, these also you can use for offloading your oil, but your marine riser will come somewhere here. Risers will come out here and then you can take out this oil from the turntable at the top. from here you can take off. So, this is a calm concept and this is your buoyancy chamber, same thing. But the only thing why it is called a catenary is because of the catenary mooring chains. So, 
so as naval architect you see the uh, there you can have to do large number of wire designs riser you can have one riser i think so many risers need not be shown so here also you will find that the ship can damage the boya in case of very rough weather you cannot stop the ship from over riding on the boya isn't it so a variation of this concept has come this is the calm is varied and you have what is called a single boya storage or an S sbs now mind you these are pretty small boyas i'll talk about the larger varieties so this is single boya storage it may have some storage capacity in your buoyancy tank but the prevention of the ship overriding the boya is taken care of by means of a yoke you have to design a yoke so this is your turntable now from this turntable say this is your water line now your ship is floating at this water line okay now how to prevent the ship overriding the boya so in your motion calculation motion calculations are quite complex in this case because you have to study the vessel motion along with the boya so you give a arm rigid arm like this fixed to the ship so this is called a yoke y o k e so this normally you prevent the ship from crashing against the boya and uh, of, of course your loading hose will come from this end now go here and the same catenary concept is out here so this uh, um, calm and the sbs you can employ for deep waters because they are fully they are the fully floating variety they do not have any structure going into the seabed so this is a sbs support now the the larger varieties that you will come uh well, is uh, these categories that is called spar spar is also a very common boya but this is very large s p a r you know what is the meaning of spar a spar is a common word in civil engineering which normally means a tall cylindrical structure so the spar concept is um, pretty widespread in offshore engineering so here you have a neck type of column and here you have the larger buoyancy tank or now so in in this spar actually you can have there are two types of spar which is called a this is a cylindrical spar and uh, spar next class i will give you the detailed diagram of a spar so this is your spar now here uh, the this uh, your water line is somewhere here all right now spar concept spar 
normally it does not have any attachment with the seabed. Seabed you are free and you can attach your mooring chains in this form. And your marine riser is taken care of, comes like this inside the tank. Sorry, this is a little bit off center and goes out like this. So, normally in the spar, you will find the empty tanks, the giving buoyancy are located at the top, and down below you can have what is known as ballast tanks or weights. So, you have ballast weights down below. Now, instead of this cylindrical tank, you can replace part of the cylinder by means of a truss. These are called a truss power. The other one is, I think, the, the name of this one is probably, I think, a cylindrical spar or something. I will give you the truss spar, I have not shown out here, but basically, the spar will have a buoyancy tank at the top, or rather, you write buoyancy chamber, and a ballast weight down below, or ballast tank down below. To make keep it upright, and in your and now the motions actually to prevent there will be a lot of surge sway and all these motions, so they are restricted by means of these catenary chains. So your tanker is out here. Now, a variation of this spar, instead of having a long sort of tank out here, that is having the same diameter. Now, the problem with this kind of spar concept you will find, you have a lot of vortex induced vibrations. So, what they do, they incorporate some helical streaks along this. Uh, shell of this spar. These are called helical streaks. So, this prevents wave vortex induced vibration. Well, these are some of these concepts you will come across. Now, the other one that is quite common, but not so common as your spar is your ELS BM. The ELS BM is a larger boyer. So, the full form is exposed location. single boy mooring. And here this BM. Now, here this BMs, you have a larger buoyancy tank at the water surface. Now, can you tell me what is um, you know, this difference between a spar and an ELS BM, which should have more motions? Dynamic. 
Yeles BM or SPAR. Now remember in the naval architecture field, where besides your hydrostatics, R and P, the motions in offshore actually the motions are very, very important. So, which is going to have more and less motions. So, this is the diagram of a ELS VM. So, motion calculations you have to do in a tank. So, your marine riser, same thing, this is your seabed, uh, your marine riser you can take it up from down below inside the tank. But uh, here actually the larger tank is at the water surface. Now, giving what? Giving a larger deck area. So, here you can have your heavy deck, turn table, etcetera, all this you can have out here. Your FSU will be somewhere here. So, you compare this with the SPAR. So, SPAR did the design where I have drawn. So, SPAR this thing was just drawn at the back. So, this is your SPAR. Now, SPAR you can see at the water line you are having a smaller water plane area. But uh, most of the tank is submerged, a large volume is submerged below the water line, whereas in this case a considerable volume is at the water plane. Now, motions especially the heave motions are governed by water plane area. So, you have more water plane area at the mean sea level, you are in for larger heave motion. So, your heave motions are going to be more out here. So, the same configuration you have your buoyancy tank out here and weights ballast weight down below. Ballast or here you can give solid ballast. Now, to prevent a large amount of motions, you have catenary anchor like chains. So, your marine riser goes inside. more motions than your spar, but larger deck area support. So, this is called an ELS BM. The other one is called SALS, SALS. This is a single anchor leg system. Now, here the buoyancy tank is located somewhere here. A large part is protruding out of the water, and here you get a column, steel column. A universal joint will be down below. So, pilot. Now, in this system, you have a 
राज योग सो दिस इज योर योग विथ ए बॉयसी सिलेंडर एंड ए ट्रस so these structures have to be designed taking into account your extreme weather conditions say 25 years extreme storm so this is your fsu so this system is called a yoke now you can see a very large yoke attached to a boiler so this is your boiler buoyancy is coming from this tank and this is a universal joint now since these structures this one the other category is the or alc that we have talked about this one and also the saram system they are they are to be positioned in shallow waters the deep water you go for elsbm and spar so shallow water where you can have fixity with the seabed you go for the uh, this thing salts now you keep on increasing the size of the salts you have a yolk tower but all these have fixed they are fixed with the seabed but the buoyancy tank you can see buoyancy tank is located below the water line class you can go so this is a uh, yoke this is called a yoke tower so here also there is a universal joint and this is your buoyancy chamber now you have a bridge type of truss so the truss is quite large out here so you the uh, in these two system that is your salts and your yolk tower the loading hose you can load it from here you can take it through the yolk so you can give some protection to the loading hose uh, here also you can uh, the loading hose is not so actually the loading hose is going over the yolk somewhere it will come 
so the chance of ship overriding the buoy and damaging the loading hose is not there. So this is a larger category, so this is called a yoke tower. Now where you have of course this type of structures we are not to be found in the tropics, you will have in Canada etc. where this is called a monopile. Now they are specifically designed to ward off ice bugs that is floating ice. So here you make this structure out here truss shaped. Now these are not floating, these are absolutely fixed structures. So you have a buoyancy tank below and you have just one column, but these are very slender structures, not suitable for heavy duty. The base is some kind of a tripod type base. So this is a monopile construction. So your water surface is somewhere here. Now this type of structures are suitable for marginal fields. That is where you do not have too much of oil, they are called a marginal field. So marginal field you do not waste your money on having a very large structure. Now here actually you make a steel base, do not make it out of concrete and this is seabed you. Now the tower concept you have another called cat. or catenary anchored tower. So this again is not a large structure, this is also a small structure. You simply have a column through which you can take your marine riser, but this is going to revolve about the base by a universal joint. So this is called a cat. So you have a heavy deck etc. out here loading hose and all this. But the only difference is you moor it by means of a chain. The column is actually moored by means of catenary chains. And the other thing that you can notice is no buoyancy tanks. So these are very tall and slender structures, no buoyancy tanks, catenary anchor chains. Catenary moorings, universal joint. So this is the speciality. Now the last two varieties are 
what is par I have already talked about, there is another configuration which is called a semi spar. So what is this semi spar? Semi spar is a semi submersible is a combination of a semi submersible plus spar. Now you all know what is a semi submersible, huh? TLP semi submersibles I have talked about. Now this is a combination of a semi submersible and a spar. So the semi submersible you have columns and down below you have a pontoon. But uh, since this is also a spar concept, you will find that the columns are sticking out of the pontoon below the bottom of the hull. So that is why it is also called a spar. Spar actually means the uh, is a cylindrical structure, tall, long cylindrical type of structure it is called a spar. So this is a semi spar. Semi spars are not that common, but it is still there and your water surface is somewhere here. So this behaves more or less like your semi submersible. you have your drilling rig, your riser will go out through this. So these are your columns, this is your pontoon. And this is your deck. So your floating storage unit is going to be located out here. So again from here you are going to take it. So this has storage capacity in the pontoons. Now you have to move it semi submersible is always moved by catenary anchor chains. So this is your catenary and your riser is coming from here from the wells. So it is a semi spar concept. So last one to some extent I have talked about that is called a turret or turret mooring. Now turret moorings actually there are two types, one is called a external turret and the other is a internal turret. Now the one that I will be showing out here is an external turret. So external turret is a structure which is fixed to the bow of the ship. This is called a bow turret. So your tanker is somewhere here. Your uh, sorry your tanker will be somewhere here. Now this uh, advantage of this type of turret mooring is that the ship is literally clamped to your moorings. There is no chance of the hose getting damaged. So this is a combination of a mooring along with a what? along with a yoke. We have to make a 
structure like this which fits smugly to the bow of the ship. Now this from here actually there is a uh, the mooring or the catenary moorings are attached at a rotating table fixed at the bottom of the turret. So actually the ship is able to revolve about the turret. Now your marine riser will come from this, it will be taken up, here it will go up and then right down to the tanker. So this is your catenary, this is your marine riser. So, ship bow modified. Modified to take turret. Now, this turret mooring is quite common. Now, turret actually the position is normally you can position it at the bow because the ship will not be in danger of overriding your catenary chains or you can have an internal turret. Now, normally turrets are positioned at the bow of the ship. Now internal turret is how it will be positioned somewhere inside the ship at this location. So your moonings will come out here. The ship is able to ship rotates about turret. Now, in your uh, this thing, in your uh, interviews and all this, they, they, they will ask, they might ask all these questions, you know, what is the turret mooring? So, immediately you just draw this diagram and you just tell them there are two types of turrets. One is called the, this is an external turret, external turret and this is called an internal turret. Now they might ask you why you go for turret mooring, why not the normal moorings. So what is the reason? The reason is you have a single system about which the ship can revolve or rotate. Now that is called ship weather vanes, it is called weather vaning, weather vanes about turret. So, the ship is efficiently about to weather vane about turret. So, that is the main advantage of turret mooring. So, all these questions, they are, I think nothing high large scale maths is there. But these are common practical questions that normally they are asked, students are asked. So, we just have a glimpse. So, these are about turret mooring. Now, next class, we will try to finish the spread mooring system and then we will go to structures.